Hey everyone, we can finally use WAN 2.2 Animate in Comfy UI. Awesome, right? Now we're gonna focus on all the different features of WAN 2.2 Animate, how to do everything they show off on the model's website, stuff like creating character animations, swapping out a human for an animated character, using different camera motions, and even replacing the character entirely. Honestly, a lot of these features use the same types of inputs. There's also this other thing called consistent light and color tone replication, but that needs separate LoRa model files to run. First up, check out the WAN video wrapper. If you're already a Comfy UI user, you've probably downloaded this already and maybe even played around with WAN video a bit. Head over to the GitHub repo and make sure you grab the latest version. It's the one that supports WAN 2.2 Animate. Once you've downloaded it, just pop that folder into your Comfy UI custom nodes folder. When you're in your Comfy UI folder, you'll see the custom nodes folder right there. Click into it, and that's where you'll put the Comfy UI One Video Wrapper folder. After you drop it in, remember one key thing. You've got to run pip install requirements.txt to download all the Python dependencies so these custom nodes work properly. Oh, and one more thing about WAN 2.2 Animate, this video we're focusing on, it's got example workflows in the examples folder. Once you go in there, you'll see a file called WAN Animate Examples 1. That's the one we're going to play around with. Once you've got your comfy UI custom nodes downloaded and set up, make sure everything's working. Like here, I just ran a video to generate a robot. You should see a message when you start loading comfy UI saying the custom node was imported successfully. If you see WAN video wrapper in that message, you're good to go. So. In this example workflow, a few things are set up by default. First, the model loader, we're gonna load the WAN 2.2 Animate 14B model. You can find it in the WAN Videos Comfy FP8 Scaled, Hugging Face Repo. If you click into that, you'll see a folder called WAN 2.2 Animate. Inside that folder, there are two types of FP8 models. The FP8E4M3FN, one is for newer GPUs that handle FP8, while the E5 version is better for older GPUs like some of the NVIDIA 30 series cards to run smoothly. The other way to run this 2.2 animate model is through the Comfy UI Hugging Face repo. For WAN 2.2, there's a repackaged repo there. Go to the Files tab, and it's super clear. They literally tell you exactly where to put your files in your local models folder. Everything is named to match your Comfy UI models folder structure, diffusion models, LoRa's, VAES, text encoders, all of it. Just follow the folder names and file names exactly. Okay, so back to WAN 2.2 Animate. There's a safe tensors file for it in there. I'm guessing the native Comfy UI nodes will eventually get updated to support WAN 2.2 Animate, and we might cover that later. For now, these model files also work with the KJ WAN videos wrapper. I've got both downloaded. As you can see here, this is the WAN 2.2 Animate 14 BBF16 file type. This one needs a ton more VRAM to process, so I'd suggest most folks just go for the FP8 version. There's also a GGUF quantization available for 2.2 Animate. I haven't tried the GGUF files on my PC yet, but hey, you can download them if you want. They're also available in the KJ Hugging Face wrapper under WAN Videos Comfy GGUF. In there, you'll find the same WAN22 underscore animate folder, and under that, you've got Q8 and Q4 options. The Q8 models give you quality very close to the FP8 safe tensors files, so either one works fine and runs in the WAN Videos wrapper. As you can see, I can just select the GGUF quantized model right in the WAN Videos wrapper. All right, so here's the thing. WAN 2.2 Animate is built on an image to video model. That means it uses WAN Video's Clip Vision to process the first frame of your image and turn it into a video animation. Here, in this sampling group, you'll see WAN Video's Clip Vision again. Its job is to help the AI understand your reference image. Basically, that's what the reference image is for. We'll explain all the other input parameters in the next step. One thing I tweaked here is the join strength part. I added multiple inputs in case I only want to change the character's outfit, for example. Then, 
I can just specify what action the character is doing in the video animation. The simpler way though is to just use the WAN videos text encoder. Select the correct text encoder for WAN videos and then type your prompts like usual. Just describe what your character looks like, what they're doing, the scene, the character, the action. Those are the three basic elements you need in your prompt for the WAN videos wrapper. Now before we get to the sampler node, check out the image embed. We're not just passing a single image to the video embed data anymore. There's a new node in the updated WAN videos wrapper custom nodes called WAN videos animate. This is the key feature that lets you customize the video, do video editing, and swap characters based on your reference image. That's the core of the WAN 2.2 animate AI model. You've got inputs for a reference image, a pose image, a face image, a background image, and a mask for the objects you want to swap. Notice they're all labeled as images, not just a single image. That's because it's going to input all the image frames from your video. So we start with the reference image here. Let's look at the top of this group. This group lets us input our reference image. In this example, I've got this futuristic robot. That's going to be my reference image. I'm using the load image folder from path node, but you can also just drag and drop your image in there. Either way, connect it and you're good. Next up is the reference video. For this example, I used a simple scene where someone is looking at a map on a digital device. I used that to transform the person into this futuristic robot. As you can see in the result, it nailed the character's face, pose, and mask. That's the data we're going to pass into WAN 2.2 Animate. The initial video frames, which get converted into a frame count here. Next, we send those image frames to the segmentation for us. By default, this workflow template uses the point editor. The point editor has its pros and cons. We'll show you that later when we run it. The nice thing is, you can visually see exactly which objects you want to mask. In my example, I put a green dot on the character's hands and body. That tells the system, hey, mask this character. The mask result looks like a black block, that's what they call it. It's masking the regions that the WAN 2.2 Animate AI will use to swap the character into your futuristic robot or whatever reference image you input. So, from segmentation to grow mask, you want the mask to have a little extra space, not just a tight cut right on the edge of the character or object. Give it a bit of breathing room. Also, make sure the mask is in a blocky, pixel squared style. That helps the 2.2 animate model recognize which part it's supposed to swap or modify. Once you've set your mask and background image, you're ready to go. After we get those image frames from our reference video, we send them to the face image group to get a close-up shot of the character's face. Sometimes it flickers a bit, and that's okay. It still does its job. But ideally, you want a really close-up shot of the character so the AI can animate the face using your reference image for higher quality. The set pose image and set face image nodes do their thing in this group. By default, set pose image uses DW pose. You just pass in the video frames and send them to DW pose. You can choose whether to detect hands or not. I usually leave it on detect body enabled. That way, the set face image node can focus solely on swapping the character's face. So, we've created all these different input options and passed them into the WAN videos animate node. Once you understand how the data flows from your inputs all the way through to these parameters, you'll have no problem at all. The WAN videos animate node also has a color match option. You don't need to use a separate color match node to adjust coloration for long videos. This model handles long videos pretty well without much degradation, unlike WAN 2.1 Vase, so it's kinda optional. You can turn it on or off. If you turn it on, you can switch to a different color match model above that option. Now, let's talk about frame window size. This really depends on your computer's hardware. If you've got a beefy setup with lots of RAM and a powerful GPU, you can crank up the number of frames here. The note in this template is super clear. The number of frames and frame window size should be the same number. For example, you can follow the instructions and set the frame window size to match your total frame count. Or, you can just set it to 77 or 81 by default. That's what the AI videos usually render per batch for long videos. Here's how it works. Let's say your number of frames is 500. 
the system won't try to load all 500 frames at once that would crash even an H100 GPU. Instead, it chops it into chunks. If your window size is 77, it'll process frames 0 to 77 first, then 77 to 154, and so on. I've got an example here where I generated 81 frames. Since my window size was set to 77, the first batch processed frames 0 to 77 in 42 seconds on my GPU. Then, it started the next batch for frames 77 154. Even though I only had 81 total frames after the first 77, it still had 4 frames left. So it pulled those 4 into the second batch. But since each batch runs 77 frames, it adds some extra frames at the end. You've got to pay attention to this when setting your numbers. In my example, the woman in the video looks up and should stop there. But because the second batch went up to frame 154, the AI generated a little extra motion to fill the gap. It's creative, but it's something to watch out for. Honestly though, it's not a huge deal. Just match the frame count to your reference video. If your system can handle 81 frames per batch, set it to 81. It's your call. Whatever works for your setup. Alright, let's try this with another video. Say I want to animate this character into something else. I've got a fast group bypass node here, tagged for the sampling group. The reason? When I enable everything in the workflow and load a new reference video, the point editor might still be showing the first frames from my previous video, or it might be blank if you just started Comfy UI. So, I use this like a toggle button to turn off the sampling group. You could also turn off the model loader if you prefer, it's up to you. Basically, once you toggle this off, click Run once, and it'll load your new video, passing the first frame to the point editor. As you can see, it just loaded and is now processing the masks. Sometimes it might not get the location exactly right. For example, if I want to be more precise about my character, I can add more dots. You don't have to be pixel perfect. Just give the AI a general idea of where the object is. To add more positive green dots, hold shift and left click. If you want to add a red dot, an area you don't want the AI to segment, hold shift and right click. So, you can put red dots around the person to tell the AI, hey, this is the boundary. Don't segment anything outside this area. It's super simple. You can even click the question mark icon to see all the instructions. Shift plus click is for green dots. Shift plus right click is for red dots. To delete a dot, just right click on it. I'll run this again and you'll see the segmentation changes. It reloads all the image frames. Okay, look at this. It even masked the hand that's underneath here. That's perfect. We'll also check the reference image and face detection, which is super clear this time. The eyes will focus on different areas, and the head and cheeks will move a little. Let's run it and see how it looks. I also added a reward model this time. These other LoRa models can actually collaborate with WAN 2.2 Animate. As you can see, I'm using the Light X2 V Image to Video LoRa model to run with low sampling steps in this workflow. Like I mentioned, WAN 2.2 Animate is based on an Image to Video model. So, once you load the 2.2 Animate file, you can also choose any LoRa that's compatible with WAN 2.2 Image to Video. That way, you can run extra LoRa with no problem. It's running now. We'll see how it performs and how long it takes to generate these 81 frames. After it loads the video, here's what I got. You can see the character's identity is pretty clear in the video and the hairstyle matches too. Everything's kind of similar. But if you need more detailed character consistency, I'd suggest adding a character, Laura, in the model section. That'll lock in the character's identity way better than just using a single reference image. Another way to use one video's animate is with just the pose and reference image. If you've got a face, definitely use the face image. But the background and mask, those are optional. This is great for generalized arbitrary character animations, like when you have totally different scenes than your motion control video. I'm going to try an example like that. Instead of just warping an object with a mask and keeping the same background, this time I'm using a close-up shot. And I've got another reference image that's also a close-up with a similar ratio and camera distance. It worked out great. 
The facial motions from the reference video mimicked the reference image perfectly, creating our final video. As you can see, the background here is not from the reference video. We didn't use the mask or the reference video's background at all. Every frame is pulled from our reference image. The character looks just like they do in the reference image. The hairstyle. The clothing. What I really love about this AI model is that it even handles accessories, like this necklace. Even from different angles, it replicates the necklace correctly, matching the character's new front-facing view and different camera motions compared to the reference image. So, that's another use case, just using the reference image, pose image, and face image. Like they mention, it's generalizable arbitrary character animations. We're using a human example here, but you can totally switch to 3D or 2D characters too. I've got another image I can use with the same video. You'll see it looks just as good, and you can totally transfer expressions like from a talk show host to this anime character. In this one, I'm going even better on the facial expressions. As you can see, the background also transfers to match the cartoon reference image. So, it's not just about swapping a character or replacing an object, it can do a ton of things. It's very similar to Juan Video Vase, which we played with in 2.1 or 2.2 Vase. Same concept, but the quality? Way, way better than the last video AI models we had. Things just keep getting better and better, as always, in the AI world and tech world. We can expect even more state-of-the-art AI models that you can run locally or privately on your own server, letting you generate videos just like you see online. And of course, we're not just limited to simple motions. You can do full-on actions, like a TikTok dance. You remember those from Anime Diff? Now, AI video has evolved even further, and the results are way better than before. I mean, before is like just a year ago. Look at the quality here. The movement stays true to the reference video, and the facial expressions let us bring our image to life. This isn't just masking a character, it's full character animation driven by the reference video. It's a huge step up. You can even see the shadows. The AI noticed the sunshine coming from this angle in the image and projected the character's shadow correctly. That's seriously impressive for an animation AI model. So go check out Juan 2.2 Animate. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.